Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Mark Fixes Stuff. In this uh, Mark Fixes Stuff episode we'll be changing the thumbsticks, just the thumbsticks, on this uh, PS4 first generation controller. Um, it's the one I've had since I got my PS4 new, so it's about two years old and it's worn out. Otherwise the uh, controller's great, to be honest. Um, what happens is after a while these stop being all grippy and uh, yeah, then they just start to wear out things like destiny and all that sort of stuff this one's a little bit more grippy but this is the run one so that's the problem um now the videos you see about changing these sticks on tinternet are a little bit sort of edited as far as i'm concerned because these are not the easiest things to get apart no matter how many stages people skip so uh we're just going to go for it with um some tools okay cool tools the tools that we need. First off, we're going to need a little micro tip screwdriver. Uh, this will do the trick. This is a 0, zero by 35. Okay, so a 0, zero size um, cross tip screwdriver. We are going to need either a pair of tweezers or uh, dolphin nose pliers, but nothing serrated because we're going to be using it on um, some flat folded cables, some tiny little ribbon cables. And uh, what else do we need? Well, usually I would recommend a spudger, um, which is a plastic uh, mobile phone opening tool, but I've lost mine. So we're gonna use some guitar picks, which are equally good for this sort of thing and great for mobile phones. Now, the reason you use these and not say, for example, the ones that, uh, in some of the videos I've seen, a flat-ended screwdriver, the reason that you use those is because this is made of metal and this is made of plastic and when you turn something in a plastic groove you're going to kill it if it's metal but if it's plastic then you won't kill it it will just bend so you won't end up with all sorts of little divots and things that are going to irritate your hands when you're holding your controller like a glove now um the thumbsticks that i've bought the thumbstick cap replacements let's call them are only one pound ninety nine, and I've got purple ones, so that you can see I wasn't cheating. And um, they're kind of a two component thing here. They're plastic on the bottom, but the top's really rubberized. It's almost like gritty, and they feel really, really grippy. And also they're purple. I like purple. It's a nice color. So two purple ones. Hello there. How are you? I'm fine too. Um, and we're going to swap them over. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to move these tools out of the way. Flip the controller over. Get yourself a little tray of some description. This will do fine for your screws. Pop those over there. And get your screwdriver, your micro screwdriver. Oh, wrong one. There's a flare tip one. Should have put that away. Um, your micro screwdriver, your zero zero screwdriver into the screws. I'm working around the camera here, so please excuse me camming out. Um, so one screw. These aren't actually that difficult if you know there's a couple of little tricks. I've done a few of these. Two. Um, also, via following this, you'll see how you can change the battery. So if your battery isn't holding a charge anymore, it's super easy to watch this video and see how to switch it over. So that's three. And four. These are not the easiest thing to take apart. And I've noticed, and the reason I'm making this video is I've noticed on the internet that um, people seem to skip the bit about cracking the shell open. So, Christ. Come on. I'm under the lights here, so my hands are a bit sweaty. Nice, isn't it? Glamour, that's what I call it. Right, so the screw is coming out as well. Itch my nose. I've actually picked up the wrong screwdriver. This isn't the one that's easy to turn. I've got two sets of these screwdrivers and this one is a little bit worn out, bless. Anyway, so yeah, there we go. So there's one, two, three, four, they're out. That hole there is a reset button. That's not a screw hole. There's something to watch out for on your uh, controller. It's a little rubber bung in some of these. Not all of them that I've seen though. So I don't know if someone's got there already um, and lost them, but there isn't one in here, I don't think. So, okay, here we go. Dum, 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 dum. First thing you do once you've got the screws out is take the controller, 
brace it in your hand like this and you want to crack this bit open by flexing it. I'll push that back together and I'll show you again. So let's go here. Yep. Basically brace it here. Now little bits of plastic are gonna drop out of this as you do it because there's these little tiny um, gate clips, as I call them, bloody hell, um, which will break a little bit. Some of them will, they're just the way they're molded. Okay, so got that little bit clipped, unclipped there. Now, as you go around this thing, they are gonna clip back together and you're gonna get quite frustrated. So take your guitar pick and start to go and push in. And what you're doing is you're pushing the posts in And the joy of guitar picks is you can leave them in there. Okay, so that's one, and we'll go the other side, okay? Um, yeah. oh, let's have to clip back together again. Get the guitar pick in there, come on. It's really hard to do it around the camera because I can't really see what I'm doing. Let's see if I can lean around. Ah, I can lean around. Okay, so sorry if my voice has changed, but I'm leaning around the camera. There's one there. Come on, you bastard. And this is the hardest bit here. Oh, you twat. Sorry about the language. <laughs> Sorry of all my videos. Are. This is the hardest bit here is in here. You really need to get inside. And there's um, a post here and a post here. And it's really bloody difficult. So look, guitar pick in underneath this scoop. And then push in and go around. Okay. So that's starting to come free there. You see it? And again there. And this is why you don't use a metal screwdriver because by now you've gouged lumps out of your controller case. Ha 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 ha. Eddie, he says. Once you've got this side open, you're almost there. And this is the part where I usually rip one of the triggers off. So, oh. Yep, yeah, so you see here. We have these handy dandy little bits and bobs in here. So I'm gonna flip it over onto its tummy. And we are gonna, oh, turn the controller on, look. Bloody hell. My darling wife wasn't doing anything on the uh, PS4 in the other room. Okay, so here we can see the case, the lower part of the shell comes out of here. And it also, this is a bit of a bind. Ah, right, yes, I have done it. I have ripped the trigger out. And you're likely to do this anyway, so. The trigger has come off of its little mount. Okay. This is the thing that you want to look at most of all is not losing this if your trigger comes out. Okay, if your trigger comes out, and you lose this, you're gonna have floppy trigger syndrome. Okay, so we're gonna pop that down there. In fact, no, we're not. We're gonna put that in there. I kept a thumbnail just for this. Okay, I will pop the trigger back in there for now. I'm gonna show you how to put a trigger back on as well, because it's useful. And I've not seen any of the others show you how to do that. So um, first thing we'll do is we'll take this cable out here. Now you see you've got a um, little strengthener there, or a little reinforcer there. That's for the light bar, okay, and the charging port. Um, now what we're left with here is the rest of the controller. So first things that we've got to look at here is a battery, and it's just loose with a little connector. So pull that out there, battery, connector, buy a new battery, put it back in, put your controller back together. This is a um, lie ion battery pack, uh, 1000 milliamp hours, 3.65 volts, but you can find them on Amazon and places like that. The standard connector, not a lot going on there, okay? So now what we've got is a little tray. So we're gonna take our, um, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to take our um, needle nose, dolphin nose pliers and quickly unclip that there and unclip that there. This is where your reset button is. And this one, it's a little lump of stuff and you, you press that and that clicks down on this 
reset switch here. Handily marked reset. Okay. When you put this back in, you might need to retension these little clips very, very gently. It only just needs to have the edges clipped around the board. Okay. The only place it can go a bit peat tong now is where you see the dual shock motors. They're actually soldered directly onto the board, so you don't want to break those joints. Um, it is fairly easy to take them out without breaking those. Um, um, and if you've got soldering on, it's simple to put them back in. And what we're going to do now is we're going to remove this screw here. We're going to take the board out and I'm going to show you how to replace the triggers. I think I might go a bit further actually as well and show you how to get to the rubbers and the buttons so that you can clean all the crud and muck that you build up inside there. I might actually do that myself. I might do that off camera though because it's a bit boring, but I'll show you how to get to it. Okay, so now we need to take the screwdriver into the screw. Okay. When you're working with the camera, it's very difficult to not get in the way of what people are seeing. These screws are all the same, by the way, these controllers, so you don't need to keep them segregated. Right, so there's a little um, cable here which goes underneath to the touchpad and stuff. And it's a uh, zero insertion force jobby. So what you've got to do is flick that up. So I'll come up a little bit closer and I'll do that again. So you can actually see what's going on. So you can see here you've got this little flap and you flick it up. And that means that this literally just oh, this literally just slides out. And that line there is so that it can you can tell that it's in properly. Okay, it's it is in the right position. Now we're gonna take the board out and ever so gently turn it over. This can be a bit difficult because you can't see what you're doing. And there are the thumbsticks. Okay. These just pull off. So I will show you that now. Uh, holding the board and sort of getting underneath it and just pushing up one. Holding the board, getting in there, just pushing up gently underneath it. Two. Get your new thumbsticks. They've got a little key inside. I think they're anyway up, to be honest. Pop it in onto your stick, spinning around there, and push down. That one's on, and the other one. So, I wish I could get a bit closer for you guys, but uh, can't really. I would have done this by now if it was uh, not being filmed. Come on, you little runner. There we go, lined up. There we go. So thumbsticks are on. They slide down to a certain point and they're just ready. Um, you can actually replace the whole thumbstick um, mechanism if you are of a mind to do that, if they're worn out. But for me, I'll probably personally just get a new one at that point because, uh, yeah, it would be about time. Now, underneath what you've got, going a little bit further, is you've got this whole other... Um, this whole other subset like a bit of a chassis inside now you can lift this up quite easily and what you're going to see underneath oh you know what's wrong I didn't put that cable through put that cable through there because the um, the stiffener there was acting as a break and not going through the slot so let's put that cable through gently there now this will actually lift out Gently, because what you don't want to do is kill your dual stock, dual stock, dual shock soldering points. Okay, you can see that membrane there is a push to make on that board. And underneath this, you've got all that jazz. You've got your little speaker and all that stuff, and little capacitive touch buttons. Capacitive touch buttons there. Okay, so if there's capacitive uh, membrane, it stands to reason that there's going to be capacitive buttons which there are now these are much easier than the snes and their elk because um, they actually are a rubber cap so you can pull them off like this dead simple um, pop the buttons out which are keyed uh, clean inside clean around the buttons and pop them back in 
um, you can also pop the entire touchpad out like that dead simple and clean around the sides where it usually gets a bit scuzzed up and again clean around the uh, the insides of the chassis so reassembly is quite literally <clears throat> the same in reverse um, but I think I'll show you anyway because no one ever believes people when they say oh, it's the same in reverse because it is but before we do that I'm going to stop the camera I'm going to quickly clean around my buttons because they are a bit scuzzy actually so I'm just going to pop those in there <clears throat> start button and the uh, PlayStation home button and pull the rubber cap out inside there I think that's any way up anyway it works anyway I don't know. it's cat hair I think a bit worrying I haven't got a cat I joke I have got a cat, a cat. oh look at that nice sweat that's the sweat of Mark Fix's stuff so I'm going to give this stuff a quick clean up and uh, I'll be right back with you and then we'll reassemble together. Okay, see you in a minute. Bye. It's worth noting that some of this around the, the buttons, for example, is not dirt, it's actually wear. Okay, so you will get wear, of course. Dun, da, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Right, we're going to use a toothbrush for this, so uh, I'm just going to put a bit of this crappy M Talk knockoff I've got from Poundland. Going to take some of this, which is IPA, just as a bit of a not a wetting agent because it's not wet, but it's something to grind it into a paste with rather than. It. Oh man, this is going over and it stinks. I love it. Ew, that's disgusting. Okay, so not perfect, but a, a lot better. I can't quite get into there, to be honest. Um, it's clean though, uh, definitely around the sides, which is uh, where it counts really. Okay, so I'm um, going to put this all back together now. I've cleaned little round buttons and it took a second with a wipe. So for some people this can be quite tricky getting it in, but what you've got to do is take this edge here, if you see there's a groove here, so what you do is you pop it in like that, and then you twist it around so that it goes through into the groove, and that is your touchpad in. Okay. Next we're going to get some buttons. Buttons. Okay, and we are going to put the triangle button in first, triangle being on the top. And these are keyed, so they're only getting the right one. The nice thing about the rubbers on this is that when you um when you put the rubber caps back on, it will actually hold them in place. So we're gonna put the uh circle in now, which is this one. I'm working backwards of course. They're keyed like lots of other no, that's not right. It's that one over there, isn't it? Because I'm working backwards. They key like lots of other game pads, like the uh, SNES joy pads, for example. Okay, so that one's in. Sorry if I'm going out of camera shot as well. <laughs> X button, which is down the bottom. Let's rotate it until the, uh, the keyed parts go in. And then the boom, 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 square button where I was trying to put the circle button earlier. Okay, so those buttons are in. Um, next we need the capacitive pad, which just goes over that and it pushes down. Is that the right one? Have I used the right one? Let me just check. I think they're the same actually. No, they're not the same. So that one is definitely for that. <laughs> so you get the little so and so there, then these little black bits, if you didn't know, are actually um, conductive. And what they do is they push down on the circuit board and then they make a connection. And it's that simple. So I'm pushing this down now so it's uh, 
sat properly and there's four little black posts there that needs to go through all good nothing bad now those buttons are held in position which is something that doesn't happen on all um, joy pads now where's the uh, d-pad uh, take the d-pad d-pads in any way up just drop it in okay and the same deal uh, works out with this one which is sort of a more of a cross than a clover leaf and again there's the four little buttons it's a case okay, of massaging this one into position it's quite hard around the camera I'm afraid okay yeah flip that on and that one once you get a couple in it's not difficult yeah, the four little posts through just make sure that all the edges around are flat and flush and push down so that's the d-pad okay there's some tension on the buttons and the d-pad now so uh, next thing we need to do is the um, what's the name button the home button make sure it's the right way up because I think you can get this the wrong way up yes you can and I just did and my paranoia makes me check anyway yeah it's the right way up and this one has got a little um, rectangular pushy button job which I think has to have the fat bit there at the top yes it does it will not go the other way around okay so that's there that is on that's uh, fat bit is because of the slope of the button there yeah. okay so that is those buttons next we need to put in the uh, share and shoulder buttons now I'm not sure which one is which here I'm pretty sure that this one is going to go in here they are keyed you can only get them the right way around and this one has got to go in there by extension yeah good all right so yeah they look correct all good nothing bad i don't think they're transferable no they're not because look they're like mirror image so um those are back in okay so we're going to pop this back in now there's something you must remember as you do this you must take this blue thing and you must feed it through this hole here okay because it's got to go into the board the loose board at the moment that you can't put on because it's got to be screwed to this screw post so one of the easiest ways to do it is stand the cable up and sort of aim over the top it's very difficult to show on the camera but it's not difficult to do in real life it's usually the other way around believe it or not so I'm um, going to go down on that there and then as we're going through we're going to guide Try to guide that through. Almost. You can use your little um, needle nose pliers or tweezers at this point. If you bring that up. Okay, of course, being super gentle with that. Right, so that is in the place that it needs to be. But next thing to do is put a screw in. Stop things moving around. Oh, purple. Um, so all the screws are the same in the uh, in the controller so we can use any of these and we'll get that and pop that there now you know which ones are the proper screws for screw holes because um, there's a white circle around them and an arrow on Sony stuff which is dead handy if you ask me so just do that up I've switched to a slightly bigger screwdriver here because um, the other one's a bit of a pain to use because it's uh, a bit feeble minded so I think it's a zero one that I've gone up to so that screw is done up not over tight because it's only plastic at the end of the day um, to, just enough to hold it now we're coming back to this little um, zero insertion force um, connector I would usually use my fingers but so you can see I'm just going to use these and it just literally goes gently back into this socket here Okay, and what you're looking at here, oh sorry, did I get out of focus? What you're looking at here is this line is needing to be in line with the socket 
and you just push that down. So I'll just show you that again. That's all the way in. And then you push this down and it grips the cable. Yeah, here we go, it grips the cable up to that line. Okay, so that cable's in. Sorry if that went out of focus, ever so small. But you can see the line and all that good stuff there. You just flip up with a finger now and down again. Okay, so, okay, so we've got the board in, we've connected the um, touchpad our buttons back in, our sticks in, all good stuff. So now what we need to do is reconnect this thumbstick. Mm -hmm. And the spring came off. Often when you uh, pull these apart and they come up, they come off, then this will lift off as well. So be careful that you put it back on if it's come off. Okay, it needs to sit just over the top, just like that. Lovely. Right, so um, first off we get the trigger. Now, if you look at your trigger, you will see how it lines up like this. It's got to go on the top and it has got a little spring that goes into a gully here. Now, if you look here, you can see a little um, gully which one side the spring goes into. And if you look on the trigger, you will see the corresponding gully uh, near my thumb now this side okay so what we're going to do is we are going to quickly grab the spring which is in my tray of tricks quite hard to pick up I've got a thumbnail at the moment the older you get the quicker your thumbnails grow um, if you've got sort of like floppy triggers you can actually bend these out a little bit to give them a bit more tension so um, yeah because they get compressed over time like that and they lose their resistance so the way to do this is you get your trigger I'm trying to show you this in the most 3d way possible and then that goes on there okay then you go to your controller let's see if we can get nice and close for this and then with your controller you have to clip your trigger down so that that goes in the gully then push forward and click you know you've got it right because it's doing that. Okay. okay, makes sense. Excellente. Cool beans. Right, so both the triggers are on. Next thing that we need to do is to find our battery tray. And the battery tray, if you remember, has two clippy arms. So if we look there, can you see it's got a little clip there? This isn't to grip anything with any resistance. This is just to stop it falling off the board. It sits quite loose in there. So if we look at the board a little bit closer, we can see that this lines up with the screw hole. Yep. And all these components pop through. Now that's not, I mean, I could pull it off, but at the same time, it's not going anywhere because it sits in the right place. Here we can see the reset button. Again, be careful of your model because you might have uh, a little rubber bung. I didn't have one on mine. I don't know why. Other people say they have, but I didn't. It's this bit here. And I can see, because from new, out the box, I reset it with a pin once when it wouldn't charge. And that's the mark I made with the pin. The mark of the pin. So, um, yeah. So if you were to change your battery, you would now get your new battery, or if you're not changing your battery, get your old one. Just put it loose in the tray, and then pop this into the connector. It's that simple. <coughs> and finally, we just need dun, 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 to get the bottom half of the shell. Now, I didn't clean the bottom half of the shell, and I'm not going to go and do it now, because I'm just going to swear on it anyway, and it doesn't affect gameplay. Uh, a bit scummy, I know. So if you pop them opposite, Giganuba, or over against, first thing we need to do is get this flat folded cable and pop it into this socket. Now, always look at your flat folded cable and find the silver bit. Okay, that's the contacts, right? Then if you look at your socket, and this is in case you're ever in any sort of doubt, just look at the side with the pins on. I'll focus your bugger. 
that pins that side, not pins that side, pins that side, not pins that side. So the silver side needs to go towards the pins. Um, you can see when these get put together in the factory, they get a bit like crumpled up. That's because there's no way of channeling them, but there's lots of space inside the controller anyway. So um, I'm gonna have to do this on the desk. So please do accept my apologies for not doing this super duper close up. Or can I actually? Try that. If I hold that like that and then I lift this gently. Yeah, I think I can. I think I will. So these have got a stiffening board, so they, they're going quite easily. But that's completely on the wang. That's no good. Try that again. These can be quite fragile, these cables. Okay, but that is in. Now, again, if you look, you see there's a line. You're looking for that to be uh, as flush as possible with the top of the controller. So, yeah, this bit of uh, thick plastic really helps. That's fine. And, and finally, and this is a tricky part, you take your controller shell and you see you've got these two lines of plastic here. You have to get them in between the buttons like this. I'm trying desperately to stay in focus here. Get them in between the buttons like this. And sort of get the top bit in and push down. So that they're there. And then you need to almost like persuade it to go in between the trigger buttons. The trigger buttons and the top shoulder buttons. Okay, so one's in. You can give it a, a little bit of a push, almost push it in through the resistance of the buttons. Um, now we can see the shell is starting to go back together and this will clip back together before we screw it up. Screw it up, brilliant. But we're gonna clip it now. Here we go, three, two, one, and give it a good old. Okay, so that's feeling pretty good. It's looking a lot cleaner actually. Uh, both the trigger buttons, oh, they feel marvellous, and they're purple. I'm going to say Joker purple as opposed to My Little Pony purple. They do look really good, I think, actually. Okay. I mean, this controls had a bloody hard life, to be fair. Um, last thing to do is we flip it over, and you've guessed it, we've got four screws to go back in. I could have wiped these screws, really. They're a bit monkey. Monkey? Monkey. So I wipe them. We've come this far, I'm gonna wipe the screws. Jump cut. Well, I mean, slightly better. Not going to any prizes for claiming this, but that'll do, I think. That's pretty good. Yeah, that'll do. So, just gonna pop these back in to the controller. Again, they're plastic, so you don't wanna, controller's plastic, that is, so you don't wanna to go too hog wild, over tightening. Just basically when it starts to resist and it will stop. Sony stuff's really good actually. The plastic composition is uh, pretty damn good for knowing when it's time to stop. Self tappers, you kind of reach the end of the channel and it just does its thing that, that stops turning. You could go a bit cray cray, but. Okay, one into here. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I mostly do retro stuff um, on this channel, but as I had to do this, I thought I'd do it. And uh, when I was learning, I looked for a video tutorial because I like to see what I'm up against first. I just noticed that they sort of skipped how difficult it was to open up the bloody controller. Um, so yes, I thought I'd show that. And then I thought I'd show all the bits and bobs and where they are in case you do want to change your battery and stuff. So, <clears throat> so there we go. Purple thumbsticks, lovely feeling controller, nice and clicky wicky, uh, grips your thumbs, all the buttons are working great. So as usual, the proof of the pudding is very much in the eating. So uh, we'll just quickly test this out, I think. So uh, PlayStation button. Beep. Starting up, all that good stuff. Spangly purple sticks.
it looked pretty good actually. And if you look down the side, you can see there's no scarring, which you would normally get if you used a um, screwdriver, metal screwdriver, because the uh, plastic plectrum, or there's a little bit there, I think, a little tiny bit there, um, plastic plectrum is softer than the uh, plastic of the uh, DualShock 4. So, um, yeah, there we go. Look, we can see the uh, battery is connected. Left, right on the D pad is working. See, up and down on the uh, analog sticks. Can't really test those, can you? But you know, it works because that's all on the main board anyway. These uh, triggers are on the main board. You can't really test these, I don't think. You can test these. Yeah, let's see. And again, they're on the main board, so uh, light bars on, so everything underneath is connected. Um, the touchpad will be. I'm going to test that without going into a game. So you can see that the touchpad is working, although utterly useless, I've always found it. Let's go rising with ease from hell. Okay, cool. Uh, we'll just. <laughs> right two for done. So right two is working okay. And <laughs> we'll go send. And Tony will never, ever, ever, ever be as confused as he is right now. Anyway, uh, right, back to the lab. And that's it, really. So, hope you've enjoyed this video. This is Mark from Mark Fixes Stuff. Signing out and telling you to subscribe to get your fix. Please click my bell for more excitement. And please be sure to subscribe. And uh, I'll see you all on the flip side. Bye.